Hello everybody, Volin here in Pursuit of Art. Today I want to talk to you about the one thing that will make you a better artist. Or the one thing that if you're not sure if you can become an artist, will guarantee virtually that you can become that. If there's anything else that you're wondering about in your life, like could I also do this, could I maybe become that, could I lose weight, could I eat properly, could I meet more people, whatever it is that you're after. It pretty much ensures that you can get those things as well. And what's this thing though? Where could you buy it? Obviously you can't buy it. It can be given to you either. You can get it from Harry Potter's underwear and just finding out something special in there. You can't also get it from a fat pony. I'm sorry to say that, I tried it. And you can't get it from a unicorn. It doesn't work. And leprechauns, they're fake. So all that other stuff that works, that doesn't. So what's that one thing that I'm talking about? To me, that's becoming the right person, okay? What I mean by that is that for each and every skill set or for each and every task, there is an ideal character with ideal characteristics that make you ideally suited to be able to perform at a very high level. So there is no right person in general. Like there is no one ideal character that'll be fine everywhere. But there are skill sets and there are characteristics that you could use and generalize to then be able to acquire whatever it is that you need. I always walk around with this thought in my head that the right person can do anything. And what I mean by the right person, again, is someone who understands what is required of them. So they understand the task and one who is willing to put in the work to make that happen. Now that person must obviously know how to work. What are those things that are required to make you productive? When are you just fooling yourself and just wasting your time? The right person doesn't really get stuck into any of those rabbit holes. Ideally. So the right person, again, does it, there is no 100% perfection. You will get stuck very often, but the right person doesn't dwell on that stuff very long. The right person may be stuck, but then they realize, okay, this is not really working for me. I need to change strategy. And the right person just moves right on. So these are general characteristics and you can extract these and use them for anything else. Now, let me say another thing. You could be someone that's already performing a skill at a very high level, but you may not be the right person. When I was a kid, I used to lift weights, but when I used to go to the gym, I didn't really do it with any discipline. I was disciplined, but that was only because I felt compelled to go, okay? So I acquired this skill, I developed it to a pretty high level at the time, and then I quit because I didn't know what to do with it, and it wasn't fun anymore. I saw no perspective for it, and there was no environment that I could make anything with that at the time. So I had a skill, but I wasn't really the right person. I was mentally weak. Let's say I didn't know what to do with that. I wasn't creative enough. I wasn't resilient enough. I didn't know what I needed to know. Now, fast forward, let's say about 10 years later, I decide to get into art. Now with this story, I'm not saying I'm by far, as far away as possible from being the right person in any area of life. So I'm just giving you a story that I can relate to you. So when I started now, I wasn't the right person again. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to become the right person. So when I started now, I had zero skill, no potential. So art is, when I tried it, I sucked, but I sucked so bad that I wanted to see like, if I'm so bad at this thing, but if I could make my, if I could learn to do it and I thought it's impossible, I literally thought it's impossible. I didn't know the words for it. So when I, when I started, I call it, I called it learning to draw. I didn't know that it's art. I didn't know the word for perspective. I didn't even know that that was already, you know, formulated. You could just learn it. I didn't know that. I didn't know that it's already been a system that's been taught for hundreds or thousands of years. I thought that it's something that some people can do and some people couldn't. That's called the fixed mindset. But that's also part to ignorance of the subject. I just didn't know what was available. So I started then. And I had to apply all those things that I applied to go into the gym, but I now had to make them conscious, which is why I can talk to you about it. So before I couldn't have taught you anything. Like if you ask me, how do you, how do you get bigger? Well, you just go to the gym and you eat a lot and you lift a lot of weights and you just do that over and over and over and over every single day, as much as you can. Well, then you ask me, how do you make yourself go every day? I don't know. I just want to go every day. If you ask me now, well, what do you think? How do I get to do my art every day? I have strategies now of how you can possibly do that. I have strategies of what's a good way to start, what's a good way to tackle a complex subject. I've had to explore 
what I did naturally before, I've had to make that conscious. So I could hopefully give you a little piece of that that will be useful to you. A big part of all this stuff and why it's important is because when we're kids, we learn very quickly. It's because your brain has a lot of extra neurons. It's like if you're born with an even more supercomputer than what's in your skull right now, because it's still incredibly amazing what's in there. So when you're a baby, you have a like 10x brain and then you learn stuff without even trying. So then we get into this mentality of, I don't really need to work hard to do whatever it is I'm trying. Obviously you learned language without even you, the language that you speak. You probably never tried very hard to learn it. I mean, you probably can't remember how that happened, but you can use that automatically by now. But if you had to learn a new language, that would be a monumental task for you right now. And if you apply that same learning mode of, well, I'm just going to sit and look at words here and there, and then you try and see if you can remember, it doesn't work. That same strategy that you used once. So your learning changes periodically. How things used to work change as you change. So you need to be constantly varying your strategies. You need to also constantly be keeping up with what's like the new phase right now. What is expected of me now? And how do I work right now? Like what, what new capabilities does my brain have? Because your brain evolves, by the way, until you're about 25, you don't even get your full usage of your prefrontal cortex. And I can say for myself that I've definitely changed a lot over the last couple of years. So you need to keep up with what's actually going on with your brain. So then you realize better where you stand and what you can do. A bit more about being the right person. People ask me what my sources are, like who do I listen to, what books do I read, etc. I don't really go to artists very often for just general mindset type stuff. I go to athletes a lot. I go to business people. I read books by anyone that's ever done anything difficult. A lot of them are, let's say, soldiers or Navy SEALs or people that have done incredibly hard things. And you can find that as you combine all of those, that's what the right person would be to me, is that when you see all of those people that have done incredibly hard things, and when you look at the general, let's say, skill set of what they've had to practice to get very, very good in very difficult situations, that to me becomes the skill set that you can then generalize. Okay, I'm gonna apply discipline, patience, resilience, endurance. I'm gonna take all those hard skills and I'm gonna put them into art now. I'm not gonna complain about the fact that my drawings aren't coming out nice, that no one looks at my stuff, that maybe I'm not gonna make it or someone else is making it and their stuff is worse and blah, blah, blah. If we take the right person, if we take the right person attitude, and I really love this quote, it's, to the average person, everything is either a blessing or a curse. To the warrior, or to the hero, everything is a challenge, which means that it doesn't matter. You know, your circumstances right now don't matter. They could be incredibly easy and you could just be coasting, but then you kind of become a slug and you don't do very much. Or it could be incredibly difficult and you could be swamped with all kinds of stuff that you have to do and pressures all over just mushing you and pushing you into all kinds of directions. And that's fine too. You can make it work with either one. The right person applying the correct discipline, the right skill set, that's what gets you to where you need to go. I want to talk a little bit about the different characteristics of the right person. To me, they're made of hard and soft skills. So you need to have the hardness, again, of discipline, of endurance, of resilience. You need to know that you're in this for a very long time. Success will not come easily. And art, I think, is a very, very good field to try and practice becoming the right person. So these qualities are all practice. No one starts out as disciplined. No one starts out as perfect. No one even gets close to perfect, but you can get to a very high level though. And there is no perfection. So I was just recently listening to an interview with number two in the world, bodybuilder. And bodybuilding, a lot of people don't like it, but what's incredibly amazing about it is that it's not just lifting weights. It's not just preparing for the right time to peak at the right moment for the show. Let's say it's also diet. So these people have to restrict themselves 24 seven and they have to eat on a very strict, like one thing that people turn to most often for emotional comfort is food. Now, these are people that have had to take that comforter and completely erase that. So they've had to develop discipline. That's at a, such a high level that whatever's comfortable for most people and they use it for like your blankie. Imagine that your blankie is now made of like nails and all kinds of 
nasty stuff that you just put it over yourself when you have to and that's it i'm just gonna okay i'm gonna go and i'm gonna put the nails on me now for 10 hours while i'm sitting there those people have taken that and they've turned it into a regimented disciplined practice not only is it not comfortable anymore it's the most uncomfortable thing because they have to do it at all times of day very rigid and you have to manage your time along all the meals the trainings you get fatigued etc etc it's incredibly hard to do so this guy said that he tries as best he can to you know just do everything he has to do but it's never perfect it's always far away from perfect and you get to see that from every single person that you listen to will say that so what matters is then is not that you are perfect but that you make a perfect effort when you didn't feel like it when you couldn't possibly get up when you couldn't stand another study when you didn't want another one of these whatever it may be whatever it is you're practicing whatever it is you're doing when you can possibly do another one you still try you still try as much as you can even on that day when you can't you just try it doesn't matter if you succeed ultimately or not it doesn't matter if the end result is great or not but then you put in the effort because that builds on your character and each and every day that you make an effort and there's this rule of four percent it comes from Stephen Kotler's book the rise of Superman and they say that the ideal match between a challenging task and your current skill level is that the task must exceed your skill level by about four percent so that means that if you're trying let's say to do portraits if you're trying to do a landscape whatever it is that you're struggling with right now don't try and go for the entire thing and make it perfect don't do that just go for four percent more than you can do so if you go to a point where like okay i'm finished now stop there and think what else could i add and just add in that extra 20 minutes let's say add in that extra half hour if you're exercising add in those extra five reps run for the extra 10 seconds or maybe just sprint at the end add those four percent but add it consistently now over just a month of you doing that new thing with increased intensity you are already going to start seeing results and that's the path to becoming the right person the right person combines hard skills with soft skills now the soft skills are more like let's say your ability to change direction so you may be disciplined you may be resilient you may be enduring blah 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 all that stuff okay let's say you're trying all that you are doing it you are doing the hard skills that previously you couldn't do you were too soft let's say now you're hardening up okay soft skills are now am i going in the right direction you just put a stop on everything they say i think it was in yamaha or i can't remember one of the japanese manufacturing companies they gave the permission for any worker on the factory floor to if they see something going on that's wrong they could push a button stop the entire thing the entire factory freezes this is your soft skill skill set am i going in the right direction is this really what i want to be applying all these things to because you can think of the hard skills as almost like a drill you're like penetrate you're going for whatever it is that it is you're going so you're going in a straight line right to where you pointed to laser focused going down that road but at the same time are you going in the right direction especially with art where you have to combine and design a lot of these things where you may be there may be a better solution there may be a completely different approach to this entire thing so that's what makes to me that's what makes art so awesome and just thinking about it makes me feel like this this excitement it's because it's not just working hard you also have to work smart you have to be very fluid you can't just be rigid and just okay this is the one thing i'm going to do with my life you have to be rigid i understand let's say that i may not be doing art forever i may just do this for a while and use it to practice becoming the right person then i may decide that i'm going to apply it to something else like i'm already let's say i, I like doing the youtube videos i like teaching people i like doing all that stuff so maybe i will end up doing something different but I can apply those same things because I'm developing them. And art for me is like my testing field. Like I get to try all of these different things out. Like what should I work harder? Should I sleep less? Should I sleep more? Should I, how should I vary my schedule? Should I do a lot at one time? Should I, when, when should I take breaks? What's the best way to do things? Essentially, that's pretty much always the question that it comes down to. What's the best way to do things? And what could you be doing to be going towards becoming that right person? some characteristics maybe now of the right person what would the right person be like or for for instance i don't really imagine the right person being angry at any one task i don't imagine them being frustrated i don't imagine that when something happens or when they get anxious or when they get apprehensive about doing something i don't really think that they just pack it up and quit the right person to me is diligent and 
disciplined and are pursuing what it is that they want to do, at the same time are flexible, willing to listen, learning constantly and being very in tune with what's going on, what's the next thing that I should be doing, what more could I be doing, but also from time to time relaxing, letting it all go and just doing something really stupid for a couple hours. The point of this whole video and what I'm actually trying to say to you guys is that it's not really what you do. It's not whether you do art. It's not whether you're doing something else. The skill itself doesn't really matter. The skill to me is just the proving grounds, the testing grounds where you can just try out all these things. Am I learning? Am I doing the right thing? That's what you can use as your gauge of whether you're becoming the right person or not in my mind is that you can say if this is what I want to change in my life or if this is what I want to become then am I moving in that direction are the things that I'm doing now taking me there or am I just fooling myself or am I just being am I just procrastinating and just thinking that somehow magically things are gonna to come to me or you know I don't even care ultimately I don't really care about what it is that I get ultimately why I do all this stuff I've never looked for work I've never looked for jobs I have had jobs I have had work I've never really looked for them though and I'm not again I'm not saying that this will come to you and I'm not making let's say a full-time living from all this stuff but for me the most important thing is just who can I become what can I do and if I keep practicing the right thing what's the limit I can I know that if I become the right person if I practice the right things I know that I can get to where I need to get to. I know that ultimately I will become good enough. Like there's just no chance that if I practice daily, that at some point my work, let's say, will not stand out. It will stand out more than let's say two years ago when it was at the level of a four-year-old. So now let's say when it's at the level of a seven-year-old, now when I post somewhere, it's like, oh, okay, this seven-year-old did a great job. Just joking. I'm more interested in developing myself rather than my art or my skill set and art is a direct reflection of how well I do as a person how well do I execute on the things that I set for myself as challenges and if I decide to change and swap art I don't lose anything I have all of that skill set I have all that that I've developed at the strength of character that I've developed I can just change that over to whatever new thing is there and again I'm very far away from having done absolutely anything significant. I'm not giving myself as a model in absolutely any way. This is just my experience of what's really, really in my mind just changed the way I view stuff. I don't get like, I haven't had much success. Let's put it that way. I haven't had much success at all. YouTube channel is small, blog following is small, jobs are spread out sporadically. But what I'm focused on, I've improved in that. So I said that that is my goal, that I become better, that my art becomes better. That is my core goal. And if I'm moving towards that, I'm not really concerned about all the rest of it. If I decide to work more on this or that, and I've also structured it in a way that I take one step ahead, move that thing. So then this is now had a significant increase. Then I can move the next thing. Then I can move the next thing. Another characteristic of, let's say, becoming more of the right person is focus. What is it that you're doing? People that are too scattered, people that are just all over the place, you can't ever possibly just summon up that energy to push any one of those things out there so that it makes a significant difference. Art is a tool that you can use to work on yourself, to make yourself better. To me, that's the greatest value that it has. A couple more things, and then we're finishing up, about why you should care about becoming the right person at all. I think in art, there's a lot of scarcity people are always looking at other people's work comparing seeing if they're as good or not good enough or whatever it may be always wondering what the next person is getting or how much of whatever whether it's likes or jobs whatever it may be it doesn't really matter there's a lot of scarcity and there's also a lot of people just looking at other people's stuff and there's a lot of self-hate i found also apparently so people just take instead of applying that energy that they could do for becoming the right person they turn that around and start describing why they're not the right person and why they can't ever get there and why they can't do anything so instead of channeling that towards something productive which again the characteristic of the right person to the hero everything is a challenge instead of that they turn it around the energy that could be going out that they could be using to produce things 
they turn in towards themselves and they start deconstructing and self-destructing. This isn't good, I can never finish anything, I can't sit down, I can't even do this, etc. That's why I say don't focus on the art. It's not the final product that matters. What matters is that internal transformation, that step-by-step -step you go through, that you build your character, that you build that skill set, that you become the right person, the way you imagine them to be, the, whatever that means to you. You build the right person so that when there's other people around you, you can speak to them in a way that you can help them. You're not trying to take anything from them. You're not looking for anyone to give you anything, but you're content and happy to just work on your work and to be able to give and to contribute whatever it is that you can. A reason to become the right person is that same reason. There's so many people that are self-destructive or that are lost or that are afraid or that aren't really following what it is that they want to do. They're becoming angry because of that or bitter or just aren't living out to what they're, they're not living up to their potential. They're not doing what they could be doing. And that always breeds a lot of hatred and just a lot of disappointment, a lot of unfulfilled, unlived lives, let's say. You becoming the right person and being a model for the people to want to also do that, to me that's you know, some of the highest value possible, is that by you pursuing your dream and you trying to become better, you make others wanna be better. And for me that's the best thing, is that you could, you could make other people better by doing what it is that you want very contrary to how people portray being unselfish and then just giving, but then at the same time, you're probably really resentful for having to give out everything. Instead, being selfish in a way and just, but doing it unselfishly so that you wanna give ultimately, gives the best result. You're doing what you want, but you're also sharing with others so they could also become better. To me, that's easily the highest level of fulfillment is that others get to be better because of you. And a final thing, if you don't think that you can become the right person, if you don't think that you have it in you, if you think that it's for everyone else, but it's not really for you, you've always failed, you've never done anything with your life so far, you always start something, you leave it, etc. All I can say to that is that you don't really know anything about what's going on in here. None of us do. Your brain is the most complex structure in the known universe. Trillions, billions, trillions of cells, connections, daily birth, regrowth, destruction of cells. There is so much more complexity than you can possibly see. And if you doubt that, just Google micron, electron, micro electron, microscope photos, or just anything that gives you really zoomed in images. And just look at anything. Look at the most boring thing under a microscope. Look at a nose under a microscope you'll find that it's absolutely amazing. Now your brain is times your nose, but 10 billion. So your cells, every single one, the little dendrites, the little things that connect together, all the different processes that happen there, all the different compounds, the different, different chemicals that constantly are intertwining and changing and altering your biology, the way you feel, the way you think, everything. Your brain is essentially what gives you all of the feelings that you have, everything that you have. Your brain takes information from the outside world forms representation in your mind and then you're able to feel them okay it creates a feeling from an extra abstract con someone playing the violin somewhere that thing it's screechy noise translating to your brain to recognizing let's say finger patterns if you're a violinist yourself appreciating what's good your brain turns every piece of dead data into something that's living and full of feeling for you now no one knows how that happens exactly no one knows all the mechanisms of everything and that's precisely why i'm saying to you that no one knows so that means that if you think that you can't then you're making a false assumption you don't know that you can't you think you can't because you've convinced yourself but you don't even know what's in there you don't know how that works you know how you work you've gotten used to the way that you do stuff you've gotten used to well i always quit or i always have the candy in the morning You've gotten used to how you do stuff, but you have no idea what you're capable of. You have no idea what your brain is capable of. And furthermore, you don't even know what your brain is, okay? If you've ever listened to Neil deGrasse Tyson, the astrophysicist, what he says is that we are all made of the stuff of the universe. So stars and planets and 
fairy dust and whatever else is swimming out there probably a couple of astronauts stranded whatever it may be spongebob's mom everything that's swimming out there is a part of you because all the planets all the star comets meteors dinosaurs plants giant whales mermaids anything that you can think of you have those same compounds within you stars you have more neurons than there are stars in the known universe or something like that look it up essentially is that you are a miraculous accident and you have no idea what you can do saying that you can't do something is just a hypothesis that you formed you don't know anything about the mechanics of this thing you don't even know what you are you don't know what happens when you die or why you're here or anything else so just leave that alone and instead of thinking about why you can't trust this thing to do its job that's made sure that you survive through millions and billions of years of evolution and transportation from the stars and other planets that has come here for you to be able to get this body and this brain and to fill it with stupid thoughts and TV. And instead of that, why don't you find out what you can do? And why don't you test yourself to become the right person? Why don't you set yourself a difficult or impossible task and see and astound yourself with what you can do? Forget all whatever it is that's happened before. Do it in a new way. Do it in a way that is the hero's journey. Do it with, to the average person, to the common man, everything is either a blessing or a curse. To the hero or to the warrior, everything is a challenge. Now let's see what you can do. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.